Lars Delta or Rowdy Mobster here, Urban Rivals Moderator. So I'm just going to give a brief overview of the Komboka clan, Komboka, maybe showcase the new cards, explain the mechanics, and some synergy and tactics. Well, not much to say, but I'm also going to just give a brief card review. So here are the cards we can expect. There are five of them at the moment. One of them is only available through mobile. The other four can get new blood. I managed to get all four, but it costs a lot of credits. But they're worth the run. With that, I'm just gonna first train up the cards so that we can use them. With some exploration in mind, I'm just gonna train some of my cards, Komboka and Krok as well. Use some Vansa Art so we can speed up the process. If you ask me, I notice a lot of them tend to use some attack modifiers. You know, there's also this new ability that Metal introduces, which is plus two attack or opponent power. But it's actually revenge based. But still, if you ask me, it's better than plus two attack per opponent damage considering the base. Power tends to be higher, but. Well, once we're done leveling up, we should be able to use the Komboka. But I'm also going to review the individual cards before we get onto that. We don't really do overviews, but I think it's a good way to know the card. If you've seen my video on Aditya LD, well, I've already explained how her plus 2 attack per opponent damage mechanic works. Yeah, it's the lowest boost you can get is with 1 base damage. And sadly, that falls under a lot of 2-star cards. How glad is Incubus. The highest boost you can get is plus 18. Behemoth, McLean, but what are the odds of finding them? Let's look at the pros and cons. With Kumbaka, one of the pros. Now that we know what her bonus is, it's, she works well against strong opponents with natural high base damage, if we ever find any. Her ability lets her win at low pill cost, and easily fits in type 1 decks, or 25 stars if you didn't know at this stage. Don't worry. Conf. Well, I think I've already mentioned some of them, but it's pretty obvious she doesn't work well with low base damage cards, and she's vulnerable against raptors. I'm sure that weakness is in many of their cards. Next card, Kubra. Kubra, yeah. Her ability is defeat plus 1 pills for life. Axis of Victory or Defeat plus 1 pills or life, kind of like how Rudy is for Berserk, but with a different ability. Common 2 star card, so chances are you'll get her. And yeah, let's look at the pros and cons. I think the first one should be pretty obvious, but if it's not, I'll make it clear. Good base power of 7 for a 2 star. Her ability and bonus make her a potential bluff. And easily fits in type 1 decks. Same as Aditya, but yeah, I guess it's worth mentioning. Some cons. I think this win will be pretty obvious, but you can't use her ability or bonus to help win a round, and she's vulnerable against any card that cancels pills and or life modifiers. Notable ones include Oda Helpa, Mabe, Teo, and Kurisha and Sensei. We look at the next card, Jagen, and she Actually has the same ability as Han Spinner, minus one opponent attack, her life left, minimum two. Han Spinner is banned in EFC, just so you know. Her plus one pills and life bonus helps her work well. In fact, you can get up to plus 13 attack and with an extra pill, that's only if you're old. Now pros and cons. Um, pros, I can really say she has good synergy. You can even splash her in the first round. She can also be used on her own. But I imagine with this kind of card, this is a natural con. And I think the most obvious one to point out is that her ability is vulnerable to reduce bonus if you can't win the first round. And she's also vulnerable against raptors. It's two cards. Next up is Pavam. Her ability stop opponent ability. Classic. Think of first an Elvis for Kaboka or Bogdan for Kaboka. Well, they have 8 power for damage, it's just how you see the bonus. That's what determines who the better card is. Now, some pros and cons. I think the first one that's worth highlighting is pretty obvious. 
she cancels problematic abilities. Plus attack, minus attack, and she has a high base power. And she's not too dependent on her bonus. If you ask me, a problematic ability is cancel opponent pills and life modifier because of her bonus. But let's look at the cons. Ineffective against cards that have stop vulnerability, stop activate, so watch out if you're using look out for those cards. And she's not very effective against skills or protection bonus, but she should be fair enough. Lastly, looking at what might be the star of today's release, Beetle. Her ability is revenge plus to attack per opponent power. Don't worry if you're one of those Iric users or John Doom. If you lower your opponent's power, you won't compromise that boost. Oh, and she's revenge activated. But, let me tell you something. The odds of fighting Dr. Zumama and getting plus 2 attacker are pretty low. In fact, most cards on average have higher base power than base damage. So let's look at the pros and cons for our star character for now. The likelihood of facing an opponent with at least 5, 6 base power is expected. Whether you're EFC or turning player, you're likely to face those kinds of cards. Of Her high base power works well on her ability, she's not too dependent. I can use her without her ability and she's still fine in my opinion. But even with her ability, she has good ability bonus synergy, which I think is important for a new card for the new clan. But let's look at the cons. She will not boost her attack against raptors, and raptors in my opinion have good number of high power cards. And she's a 5 star card, so some difficulty fitting in her decks. While I have given a practical analysis, I'm also gonna showcase some applications so we can see how the Kamboka fare in actual battles. So I'm going to have some EFC matches to showcase and luckily I managed to draw a hand that features two Huracan cards and two Kamboka cards. However, my opponent managed to also draw some Raptors cards. In my opinion, and actually I agree with the staff when they say Raptors is one of the biggest weaknesses and Chaos Dragon's right. Raptors can really put a stomp on some of the Kamboka cards, especially because three of them are attack modifiers. Yeah, serious. Where in one, in my personal opinion, one of the attack modifiers doesn't really need it. In fact, it's really predictable at times when you have the Kamboka. Because of the attack modifier, the opponent can already have an advantage in just having to deal with the bonus and while the bonus is good for clan synergy it's not gonna help win a round you gotta actually win the round yourself it's the ability that will help you win the round in my opinion also there's one thing that i think compromises the huracan kamboka synergy it's the fact both bonuses are effective in round one in the huracan's case the bonus is still effective in the second round provided you win the first round and I think it's a weakness they share with Freaks. The first round is important. Especially when you want to get that extra pill synergy on, and a bigger boost for the plus one attack for life left. Now with the game in mind, I'm already at a disadvantage. The, the best result I can see is a draw to be honest. I mean, I can just play Tango against Amir. There is no way I'm going to play Pavan against Amir. No way. It's just an invitation for Clarus to finish me off with Fury in round 4. But given the situation, it's still gonna be a draw, but that's one disadvantage I'm already facing with the Kaboka at this stage. While it's true I am at a disadvantage because of my attack modifiers, Pavam luckily isn't one, so he really makes the cut. If I didn't draw Pavam and maybe drew another card, Claris would have easily defeated me, to be honest. In round 4, the only thing you can really benefit from is plus 1 life. Plus 1 pills is meaningless in round 4 because any excess won't really help you. But I think that's one of the things to consider about the Huracan Kaboka synergy. It's only meant for the first three rounds in my opinion. 
the fourth round you don't really see that synergy that much and yeah it ends in a draw okay so I'm in another match and I'm going to draw some cards I'm against another bad matchup in my opinion however I think Kamboka and Freaks share the same weakness not the same as in it's exactly the same methodology but more of a playstyle approach the first round it might not look much at first but when I use cards like Jagan plus one pills in life thinking about the first round it's really important because losing that first round could compromise the effectiveness of the plus one pills in life not to mention that bonus is just plus one life in round four sure you got you get an extra pill but you're not gonna use it after round four it's as good as useless why I also say it's very dangerous to lose the first round is because when you're using Huracan in synergy you're actually putting yourself in a lot more danger than you think why? firstly you don't get an extra pill of course you're gonna be spending pills to win but still the other thing is you're losing a life point you've just weakened the attack boost I personally don't think I'll need Beetle's ability but she does have a good ability and if we take a look at the current cards at the moment 9 base power 8 7 we can expect an attack of plus 14 or plus 18 at most However, if it were plus 2 damage per opponent power, that boost is a different story. You can expect something as low as 4 or something as high as 10. And if you look at the cards, majority of them, even the ones I'm playing, have a higher base power than base damage. And in round 4, I don't have my ability activated because I'm in confidence in that's a weakness in my opinion to not get an attack boost because of certain conditions but in this scenario I don't even really need it I can overcome the freaks but bonus wise I wouldn't be able to catch up to them if I hadn't landed the poison to be honest but that's just an EFC scenario I'm also gonna cover some type 2 scenarios Another thing I noticed is that when my matches, I'm not bringing them to Survivor yet, there's only 5 cards, you can't ha go on without half decking them yet. So until they have 8 cards, there's not really much you can say about them in Survivor. I've also tried them with the Dominion, but the issue with the synergy is the fact that Dominion's abilities can sometimes get in the way. Komboka are mainly designed for the first rounds, whereas Dominion in my opinion are more designed for the later rounds. However, a good majority of Dominion's cards such as Sir Gerald, Iguan, just to name a few, have abilities that are ideal for the first for the first round because it's a degrowth. However, their bonus is more ideal for the last round. As a result, they tend to have this combination of covering weaknesses to use them for synergy and Kamboka in my opinion is hard to do unless you have a good plan or unless you're using cards that don't really need to be used in the first round I've also have to say that the synergy can be tough to use but yeah Another thing I would like to point out is Beetle's ability. Her ability only works with base power and oh, my opponent had to play Clay. I'm not dealing with 8. Clay has 8 power to move in but I'm only getting plus 10 attack. At revenge this is what it would look like. The same base power, base damage logic also applies to Aditya. So as you can see I got plus 10 attack using Beetle. As an example naturally since this is the first 
few cards we get, there is not really much to say about them. I can clearly say they're not over the top strong, but they are definitely EFC appropriate. Maybe Beetle might be EFC banned depending on the statistics, but we'll just have to wait for some cards. The other cards in my opinion are unlikely to be EFC banned if you ask me. But that's because plus 2 attack per power even if it's revenge can be a lot. But we'll have to wait until Kombaka gets some more cards. With that in mind, I'm gonna just do a closing overview. My first impressions. Well, there are 5 cards so I cannot really discuss them in a survivor context. 3 of them modified tax so expect some trouble to fall if you have to fight raptors. In EFC, raptors are unpleasant. Well, here's my personal opinion, some pros and cons. Pros, first of all. The cards have high base stats. We're looking at 6, 7, 8 power. And with good attack modifiers, some of them can work really well, especially with Huraka. Just also, with the minion, they do work well, provided you're not using the minion heavily ability oriented. Cons 3 fifths of their cards are weak to raptors and they're vulnerable to freaks who pretty much take away 2 life points if they're successful with poison. Given the first 3 cards we can see are attack modifiers themselves, it can be fair to assume Komboka in the near future might have more attack modifiers. At the same time, they could introduce new cards to work towards improving their plus 1 pills and life. But overall as a clan, they're fairly strong. Hope you enjoyed this review and hope this gives you insight on the new clan.